Praise God. This is Pastor Eldridge of Global Evangelistic Ministries. Welcome to another Sunday afternoon service. We're so glad to have you with you, have you here with us. Amen. This is actually part of our new series that we've been doing, uh, that we'll be doing throughout the entire month. It is called Higher Learning. Amen. Uh, last week, some of you all got a chance to see and hear a great man of God preach, Pastor David Patterson. Amen. Um, and he's a man that is accomplished. He's, he's uh, from, from my youth, I've been able to watch him and learn from him and grow from him. Um, I, at, at one point in time, we all went to the same church and I would actually find myself walking into the prayer meetings to actually hear what he had to say, amen, when I was possibly supposed to be doing something different, but I needed to hear a word, and amen. And he has been consistent in sharing the gospel for many years, amen. He has had much success in actually preaching the gospel to in many facets of life where he's actually been able to, to deal with the hurting, the, those that are hurting, those that have been downtrodden, and those that sometimes others don't desire to even deal with, amen, but he has been faithful and consistent in sharing the truth of God's word, and I am privileged and honored to have him here today, amen. Even now, what I'm going to do before I uh, bring Pastor David uh, Patterson up and his, his lovely wife, uh, Pastor Jane Patterson, I'm going to enter into a word of prayer, and then I'm going to turn the service over into their hands. Please, please, please get out your pads, your pens, your paper, your pencils, amen. Get your cup of coffee, get your tea on the side. Set yourself up because you're about to learn, amen, from the source, the true source, the word of God, amen. Heavenly, let's, let's go into a word of prayer now. Heavenly Father, we thank you now, Lord Jesus. We do as we should, Father, to offer this service back into your hands. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would minister, oh God, as you do well. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that even as we receive, Lord God, our ears are open, our hearts are attentive, Father God, our minds are clear, and we are focused to receive, thus saith the Lord. God, I thank you now, Lord God. I thank you for the man of God. I thank you for the woman of God that you've given us, O oh God, as a gift, O oh God, at this season. We ask now in Jesus' name, God, that you would have your way in this service, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I present to some and to others I introduce Pastor David Patterson. Amen. That's right, that's right. Praise the Lord. Not our will, but the will of the Lord to be done. I'd like everyone to come before the Lord this morning, opening up their hearts. I'd like everyone to reveal some things to the Lord. What we may call secret sins or secret faults. I'd like you to be truthful before God. We have found that the only way to receive from the Lord is being true before him. Amen. Amen. Let us rip our hearts before God, before the ministration of the word of God, that we personally remove everything that is hindrance in our lives and unto him. Removing that which only he knows. Maybe your friends don't know it. Maybe your mama or your daddy or whoever don't know it. But God knows. Amen? Amen. And there is something in all of us, believe it. We are not our team, we are not perfect. So there's something in all of us that must be dealt with. And it must be removed out of our lives. Glory be to God. Glory be to God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and I so let us give him some glory and let him praise this morning. Let us be forever thankful this morning. I want you to consider a word, and that word is found at the opening in James. This is the requirement 
that the Lord our God has given to those that will overcome. This is a requirement in the name of Jesus. And also this is something that we struggle with. We find it very hard to submit. We find it very hard even to obey. We find it very hard. Sometimes this world's atmosphere doesn't harden us so much that we refuse to submit ourselves to authority. The greatest authority of all is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the power of his word. Beginning in verse 19 of James chapter 1, it is called, Hearers and Doers of the Word. Amen. Amen. There are many hearers, believe me. I've been here. I was a hearer all my life. Hallelujah. But just hearing it one prophet of me, one thing and one bit. Glory. Amen. Amen. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to anger. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superficial of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own selves. You can quote this whole Bible. In my past, I ran with an individual who can quote this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. He was a pastor's son. But yet we were drug addicts. But he can quote that Bible. So just quoting the Bible wasn't doing him any good. Just quoting the Bible and knowing the word wasn't doing me any good. Amen? Amen. We were deceiving our own selves. We were deceiving our own selves. Hallelujah. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man with the below the holy, his natural face in the glass. And all of you have looked at yourself this morning. <laughs> You said you look so beautiful and so wonderful. Now I'm ready, you know. But what is that same personality and image comes when the trial hit or when temptation hit? This is what the scripture means. This is what the next verse says. For he beholded himself and goeth his way and straight away forget what manner of man he was. You can holy and glory and sing praises every Sunday. You can come to every prayer meet every Wednesday. You can come to every service or prayer Bible study every Saturday. But if you have no relationship with Christ and you never come into that knowledge and understanding of whom Jesus is, there will not be any change in your life. Amen. 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 Praise be the Lord. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. This verse, listen to it. I thank the Lord for precept upon precept in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. For someone won't, not, won't be saying, you know, the pastor is saying that was wrong. Listen to the Word. Amen. 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 He says, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of the liberty, this is the Word of God. The perfect law of the word of the living God and continue therein and being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word. The work is the word of the living God. The word of the living God is mercy, forgiveness, so on and so on. The fruit of the spirit. Amen. 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 The fruit of the spirit. Being a doer of the word. This man or woman, I always add man and woman since I'm talking to both. Amen. Amen. All right, this man or woman 
shall be blessed in his deeds. Glory be to God. If any amongst you seem to be religious, <laughs> I love that, and brighten not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. If you're not a doer of the work of the living God, you're going to be unfruitful in every area of your life. Amen? Amen. In every area of your life. See, we always talk about, why do these things happen? Why do these things go on on in my life? And yet, the Lord gives us an answer throughout his life. One of the most perfect answers he has given, brothers and sisters, is found in the scripture in Matthew 13. You wanted to know how to be a conqueror, how to be an overcomer. This is what the Lord our God speaketh unto us today. Glory be to God. In this verse and chapters, God speaks of the son of seed. He meaning the word of the living God. Amen. Amen. The sower went out to sow. He sowed the word of God. The minister ministered the word of God. He spoke about the word of God, but in this, in his congregation, there was four different attitudes. Amen? Amen. Four, meaning the heart of man. The heart of man. I love it because when God talks, I listen. Because when God talks, and I read this word, I was operation in the first three grounds of heart and attitudes of man. That's what caused my rebellions and my disobedience. Amen? Off and on, off and on. It didn't work that way. Straddling the defenses, my mama used to say, hey, you can't have one foot in heaven and the other one in hell. It don't work that way. Amen. 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 It don't work that way. Amen. You can't serve both. Amen. Listen. It speaks about a son that went out to sow. And he sowed, and when he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell by the wayside. That means total rejection there. The individual that heard this word did not even care about receiving this word. It just fell by the wayside. It just fell by the wayside. That heart, in other words, was hard against God. People used to walk up to me and say, Jesus loves you. No response. To give me a trap. No response. I wasn't interested. That heart was hard against the things of God. Just like one sitting in churches today. Tradition brings them to that church. I mean, look at our communities now. We cannot be lying. Come on, I don't, I don't saw it in Africa. I don't saw it in America. Amen. Amen. Tradition tells you on Mother's Day and Easter, be in church. <laughs> huh? Tells you at Christmas service, be in church. Amen. If your if your niece is getting dedicated, be in church. But another 360 days a year, church don't see you. <laughs> church don't see you. Tradition. I go to that church because it's in my neighborhood. <laughs> we used to do that. Because it was in my neighborhood. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 It says, some fell upon stony ground where they had not much earth. 
Everybody knows when a seed is planted, it's got to be planted deep. You cannot plant a rose seed on shower. <laughs> you know, an inch of dirt and thinking it's going to sprout. You got to be, put it a little bit deeper. And my, I think my mama used to go about six or seven inches, maybe more. You know, a little bit deeper in that. So some fell upon that heart that was very shallow. Listen to the description of this individual that was very shallow. And for wealth, they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched and became, and because they had no root, root they withered away. Do you realize that when I was doing what I was doing, I knew the word. <laughs> it was strange. That's my wife, I couldn't go to sleep unless I picked up a Bible and read it. I was scared to sleep at night because I knew what was after me. You see, that's something that I knew personally, what was after me. I was afraid to go to sleep. So I would read the Bible. I always kept a Bible of all things. And I read that Bible. And somehow that Bible, I felt in myself, how I deceived myself, everything is okay. Even though I was going to wake up the next morning and do the same thing over again. This heart is very important. The renewing of the mind and the renewing of your heart is very important. Out of the heart comes forth what the issues of life. Unforgiveness, anger, lust, greed, violence, all that flows from the heart. It comes from our hearts. The place where Christ is going to dwell in our spirit mind, we are so filled with filth and unrighteousness that we dare to even believe that God hears us when we open our mouth. I have news for you today. Those that are here and those that are listening, the only prayer of those things are in you that God will hear is Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. For I have sinned against you in you only. And I've done this wickedness in your sight. We have a compassionate God who's waiting to forgive, who waited to heal and to deliver. There is nothing that you have did that's so great that he cannot forgive you right now. Amen. 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 At the cross, there was two more men on the right and the left hand of Jesus. One cursed him while the other one said, you and I we done violence, we deserve this. I'm paraphrasing. He said, but this man did no wrong. He said, allow me to be in my kingdom with thee. Paraphrase. Jesus said, from this day forth, you shall be with me in my kingdom. Did you hear me? The devil has said to many, you have did such great sin that he will not hear your prayer. Where's the cross? That benefit that is nailed to this cross was for me. He took in his own self my sin. 
He poured all my sins into himself. All my violence, all my wickedness, all my disobedience, all my hardheadedness, all my lust, all my greed. And everything else that was contrary to his righteousness, he took it within himself on that day on Calvary. And as I was not come forth at that time, he made a point of pouring himself when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, of pouring himself into me and into you. The day that you received him as your Lord and Savior, the day that you received him as your Lord and Savior, you received that benefit of the cross. You received salvation. You received healing. You received deliverance. You received the power and authority to speak his name. You received the power and authority to be fruitful in this world and in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the, Praise the Lord. We have to come into a relationship and fellowship with Jesus yes. on a real basis. On the real. Not just when something happens in your life. You run to a man or a woman of God. But when nothing is happening, you fly somewhere else. Real talk. Amen. Or are you reaching for something else to see you through? Where's your focus this morning? If your eyes is on man, if your eyes is on the riches of this world, you will find in this world, you will never see a hand of God in your life. You will never see it. Unless you forsake everything and turn to Christ. That is the way of an overcomer. That is the step of an overcomer. This is the power that overcomes this world. Even our faith. Jesus Christ. The word of God says that greater is he that is in me than him that is in this world. Amen. The power of the Lord Jesus' word, the power to overrule, to overrule, to override in other words. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we got to get real. I love to walk in the anointing of overcoming. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. You believe the word of the living God. I said, what happens after you believe? I did this in Kansas City. <laughs> what happens literally after you believe? War. <laughs> Not peace, war. Amen. After you start believing the word of God, war happens. The resistor stands up to resist. The thief, the murderer, the deceiver stands at the door and begins to resist. 
many fall away at that time. Why are you being so troubled? Answer that question. This word says, when we come under trials because of the word of God, which he calls us to believe in. Amen? Amen. That's when the devil hits. That's when the devil hits. Because his idea and his only purpose is to bring that denial and show something else before you. I believe the word of God for healing of cancer in my throat. It was proven in manifestation. But I'm going to show you how to devil this. Every once in a while, like last week, after service, my throat got so dry and a little bit painful. And it's been doing that for years, 20, 25, 30 years since that year. And I just say, devil, you're a liar. I don't say, wow, it's that. I say, devil, you're a liar. Why do I say that? Because of whom the Son has set free. I am for you indeed. Yes, Hallelujah. I tell everybody, God don't do no half job. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God didn't heal one part of me and left the rest infected. Yes, Lord. He cleansed the whole house. And some may ask them, why are we still dealing with that? Because it is your choice to believe. That's your responsibility. It was God's responsibility to bring this word, to seal this word by the blood of Jesus. Then you holler, when are you going to do this, Lord? When are you going to do that? And the Lord says in this very kind voice that he gave me, when are you going to believe it? When are you going to believe it? If you can't believe all things are possible, if a miracle is in your tongue, why for the life of me do you speak sickness, lack, and death? If a miracle is in your tongue, why are you saying I'm sick? And yet with the same tongue, I believe in Jesus. How do you go water? Saw the sweet water coming out of the same mouth. Sometimes we gotta correct some speech. Oh yes. Oh yeah. We gotta correct what we're saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because a, a gift package comes to you. A report from the doctor. I love doctors, praise the Lord. But they practice. Come <laughs> on. Glory be to God. Let every man's word be a lie, and let my word be true, said the Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by his stripes. I am healed. I do not believe nor serve a practicer. I serve the healer. You got to get angry at something. A godly anger. Enough is enough. Yes. 
I have come to a solution in your my life. If it's won't, if Jesus won't do it, it's not gonna happen. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I give him all glory. I give him all praise. Stop getting locked up in the cares of this world and the sinfulness of riches. That's what happens with the heart of man who hears the word of the living God. That seed falls on shallow ground and it cannot take root. He goes in a while professing to how he loves and how he worships and how he praises the Lord. And then the storm hit. When the storm hit, his whole personality changes. Every word that comes out of his mouth changes. And then there's one that goes forth and he's thinking about wealth and how to get more. The things of this world and the lusts of this world. And they go about in a while. And soon they fall away. The first three hearts in Matthew 13 did not bear any fruit. They did not bear any fruit. Amen. Amen. And some wretched in two. Another God and didn't understand. They got a pill for everything. Amen. A smart pill. <laughs> Buy this one here, and your brain will increase in whatever. <laughs> I'm looking at those commercials. A pill that's going to improve your eyes. Hmm? A pill that's going to burn every fat particle in your body. Wow. I said, now they're trying to, they, they know the addiction power of this world. <laughs> They're selling everything except for speaking the only mind that can actually do all those things. We speak about everything except for the only one that can truly do it, and that is Jesus. Amen. We have been deceived to think that I have to give up this and give up that and give up this. That's how the devil plays with you. Amen. Amen. But when, when you truly receive the Lord Jesus Christ, and I mean truly, it's not a month thing, a year thing, the Holy Spirit that takes residence, begin to cry out the Father. And when he cried out the Father, it begins to give you that desire to go into the Word of God in the state of his presence. Amen. Amen. It's not a game. See, church is not a game. Amen. 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 It is a losing battle if you want to play. It is a winning situation if you want to be a true contender. The book of Jude says, be thou continuous of the faith. Amen. Amen. And your faith is built up by one power, by praying in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have you gotten so busy that you have no time for prayer? Are you still blind to the things of God? Can you not see that which the Lord our God is trying to reveal to you? Do you not know 
that the only way he will reveal himself and that which he's doing is when you are in your secret place. Psalms 81 speaks, he that dwells in that secret place, that shadow of the most high God, that person dwells under divine protection. And there with the Lord thou God promised, he will show you. He will show you. I'm not convinced. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. I'm not convinced. Because he has shown me. He says, those that are in right standings with me, I will show them what I'm about to do. I don't guess. Amen. Amen. I don't overthink. Amen. Amen. Make your relationship with the Lord sure. Make your relationship so deep that you spring up strong. That the enemy cannot deceive you. That he can't lie to you. That the atmosphere of this world cannot dictate to you that which is happening in your life. Amen. 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 The only way a devil can have an entrance into your life is not by force. You don't have that power anymore. It's by choice. He or she that is taken captive by the devil by their own will. Some finds a greater testimony of being in life because of being sick or whatever, because that brings more sympathy, they think. They think. But if the devil don't begin to sip that much, he's going to continue to sip until he have his soul. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that no one said that it is a shame to come to the presence of God. He that knowing is that what is in us. I pray that in all my heart. I pray that no one here is ashamed to come before the living God and lay themselves down at his feet as a living sacrifice. And cry out unto us, him, cleanse me. Heal me. Forgive me. And use me in which way you will. Hallelujah. I pray that for you that are listening. Hallelujah. I pray that our ears be closed to the voice of this world. I pray that we look not upon the, the things of this world. But we look up towards heaven knowing that we have a greater, a greater reward. Again, if he has promised you heaven, and his word says, that's what he has promised you. He's also promised you resources and deliverance here on earth. Hallelujah. For his will and his glory. Hallelujah. For his kingdom. Hallelujah. When I found out who he was and who delivered me, he put me in the exact same ministry of those who was entrapped in the same things. I didn't immediately sit in front of those that had wealth. Matter of fact, I asked for the trenches. I said, give me the trenches, Lord. 
He only knows whom I even sold drugs to. Jesus. And he did. Mm. Why? Set me before those that will not deny mm. what you have done. Those that know me or rather knew me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And let your witness come forth. But that's where he put me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I asked for the trenches. I asked for the destitute. I asked for the prostitutes. I asked for the drug addicts. I asked for the mental institutions. I asked for all of that. I asked for Cook County Jail. Even though I couldn't go on the floor because of record, but I can have personal visitation. Amen. Amen. I asked for all of that. I asked for the hospital rooms. Come on. Amen. I asked for those that were suffering with AIDS and cancer. Mm -hmm. And he gave it. Mm -hmm. And he's still giving it. Amen. But most of all, what I found out. I don't recall me asking more that which angers me. And that which angers me is the state of the church. I don't saw it. And I said we got to come into an understanding that we are of more value than that which the world is speaking. We are of more value we have more authority yes, to change my situation, my atmosphere, and that of us. Hallelujah. 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 Because his word says, I will rise him in Sheba that sit in the dust, and I will rise them up and place them in the power. I will cause that dry branch to flourish. I will make a way where there was no way. That way you thought was closed has always been open. Has always been open. The Lord is shaking you this morning. The Lord is awakening you this morning. The word of the living God, this body, comes in order. This mind comes in order. These eyes comes in order. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. The doctor said to me, I'm, I'm actually wear reading glasses. But I went to the doctor about my eyes. <laughs> she looked at my eyes and she said, you have irreversible glaucoma in your right eye. I said, wow. <laughs> so I told my wife, you walked out. My wife asked me, I said, she said that when they have irreversible, I have irreversible glaucoma in my eye, my right eye, and it's going to go blind. I said, that is really something. But when I ministry, I can see directly out of my right eye. <laughs> When I'm praying, I can see directly out of my right eye. And I have said, God, heal me, restore my vision, restore my sight. I'm expecting, you know, boom. And then I hit Paul. Paul said, I came to the Lord three times about this. <laughs> to remove it from me, but he wouldn't. He said, my 
grace is sufficient for you. When you are weak, then I am strong. I said, Lord, this is a reminder of me that I need you every day of my life. Amen. <laughs> the devil was playing with this. said, when you're walking through the airport, you won't be able to see. I said, he that walketh after the spirit, not after the flesh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. 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 I'm not going blind. Because if I'm doing the work of the Lord, my sight is great. Amen. His way is not my way. Understand that. Glory be to God. His way is not my way. Hallelujah. I've always believed as a man of God. I must be shown before you as a man of God. Amen. 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 I don't want nobody to look at me like I'm some kind of superman. That I have no struggles or no, no, no problems and no pains. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, how young you look. I said, you get in this body and you tell that body the same thing, you know? okay? <laughs> <laughs> you tell this body that. Snap, crackle, and pop to get up in the morning. Huh? Praise the Lord. This flesh don't want to move in the morning. <laughs> but that one thing I do know, God says unto me, there will always be this battle in the flesh and the spirit until this day he come for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of God's word. But in, real, in reality, it is that next verse that tells you everything that he desires. Still of the song of the sea. One that we have taken out of content a lot. Even I took it out of content. Amen. Amen. Listen to this verse. Hallelujah. Give him some glory. Okay, praise the Lord. Verse 8, verse 8 said, But all fell upon good ground and brought, and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. I believe that scripture, but I took it out of content. So now God will enlighten our understanding because he enlightened minds. All right? Good seed, number one, must be sown on good ground. Hallelujah. Farmers know good ground when they either smell it after the rain or pick up the dirt. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I used to think my mom was crazy. She used to do that in the garden all the time, you know. Knowing where to plant certain seeds, she knew Instinct. Yep. Amen? Amen. So the seed, good seed, must be sown on good ground. Good ground represents good hearts. Hearts that are open, that has broken up the fallow ground of their hearts. Meaning the heart that has surrendered unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and give some glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 8, that's where I was. Praise the Lord. And brought forth fruit. Only good ground will bear fruit. Amen? Amen. But here's what where I took the uh, whole verse out of context. I looked at bearing fruit, and then I looked at the hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirty, or fortyfold. And I was thinking about money. I was thinking about money. Every time we hear those words, a hundredfold and so on, we think about a return of finances. But in reality, you remember the verse that says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Grow in grace in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is talking about the level of your spiritual maturity in the word of God. That's what verse 8 means. The level of your spiritual maturity. Amen. 
They are all different levels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are all different levels. Amen. Glory be to God. Second Peter 3. Second Peter what? 318. Read. Hallelujah. It says here, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. But grow in grace. Yes. Grow in knowledge. Yes. For he that knoweth Jesus possesses all things. He that knoweth Jesus is a joint heir. He possesses all things. Amen. Amen. He or she that comes into the knowledge of whom Jesus is. And that knowledge begins in Genesis chapter 1. From eternity to eternity. He's God. From eternity to eternity. He is God. Upon that rock he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not wait with the word. Prevail over it. He didn't say about ten million dollars. One of the things I love about the Lord is this one word. We always talk about what we don't have. When he has never said you need money. But he has always said that by faith nothing, absolutely nothing shall be impossible with you. The book of Deuteronomy, the same word of God. 15 or 28 says that you will live in godly homes that you build not. You will reap of vineyards which you sow not. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It did say for the church for understand me. <laughs> it said the righteous. Those that are in right standings with me. Come on. Amen. Amen. He said the faith in me. Because of your trial, because of your tribulation, because of what you're going through, for the divine purpose. You know God has a checklist, I believe. <laughs> To know whether you believe in him or not. He gave a great promise to the to Israel when they came out of Egypt. But then after the one of 40 years, because of doubt and denial, why did he send them through that desert? The first promise he gave Israel before the spies went out was that he has given them the land. Amen. 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 Although they went and they saw all these big fortresses and charities and giants. giants and stuff, God said, I gave you the land. Here's what we mess up at. And this is what they mess up at. When God said, I've given it to you, it was already prepared. God had already marched through that land and prepared everything to fall before him. But because of what they said, they had grasshopper faith. And because of what they saw, they fell into denial. God had made that way so easy. Only thing they had to do is go just like they faced the wall of Jericho when they came down. So they won the 40 years because of that. 
Huh. And they wandered, and those that he made the first promise to fell in that desert, but their children were the ones. Caleb and Joshua. Let's say they were at about the age of 80 yeah. after 40 years. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God came to them also before that God, they was in the mountain, dwelling on that mountain. And the Lord came and said, you have been in this place long enough. You have been in this place long enough. You have been in that situation long enough. But that second move was made hard. It was made difficult because of their previous unbelief. We find ourselves in that tug of war because of our first state of disobedience. When the Lord moved that enemy out of your way and we sat back and didn't believe. And when we come to that belief, now we got a hard way to go. Hallelujah. Because now he has entrenched himself. The devil has entrenched himself. That lie has entrenched himself. We got to become obedient to the word of the living God. When God speaking, I say yes. 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 When God speaking, I move. Yes. Yeah. That way was made hard. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because God brought them through that desert for one reason. And God is bringing you do whatever you're looking at for one reason. To see what's in your heart. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Do your faith and be tried by fire. It will be found unto the righteousness of God. That you come out that trial today lacking and wanting and nothing. That you come out of this situation in your life in the name of Jesus, knowing that your God has went before you to prepare the way. And the only thing you have to do is to obedience is move. Yeah. Is move into that very same promise of the, in the name of Jesus. That word which has kept you, that word that has kept you, that has always driven you back to his house. That very same word, when your friends or someone you know has fallen away, you have continued to come forth seeking his truth. Hallelujah. And today he gave it to you. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Enough is enough. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The power to stop it is in my mouth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear me? Because the power to stop it is in my heart. And it flows out of my mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, guys, give him some glory. You can stand to say you are a liar. When the truth, ha, ha, woof, when the truth, or when that liar is revealed, and when the truth is revealed to you, that liar has to begin to restore. <laughs> he has to restore. Why? Because God, Jesus commands him to. Jesus says, take your hands off my daughter. Restore her health. Yes. Jesus gave the commandment to Satan personally concerning Job. I'm showing you that he has no power to take your life. Amen. 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 God said you can touch everything he has. But his life, you cannot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And God brought Job through all of that to bring Job into one thing, knowledge of who he is. In the end, Job said, my ears have heard of you. I have heard men talk about you. He says, but now my eyes see. <laughs> he says, now my eyes see that you can do whatsoever you choose. Oh, man. Come on. Come on, my ears. <laughs> my eyes have seen his power. My eyes have seen his goodness. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. The devil didn't want you to know this. By what authority do I stand here? By the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Jesus. Ah, ah. Come on. Only thing you have to do is receive it. Receive it. You stand and you receive. Yes. You receive deliverance. Yes. You receive healing. You receive household salvation. Household salvation. You receive unmerited favor in the name of Jesus. His word, he says, my word that has went forth out of my mouth shall not return to the void. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God took a hundred dollars of a real need that we had. God took a hundred dollars and laid it out. In a matter of weeks, he restored it back a hundred times more. Or was it ten times more? It actually was. Because he's always said to me, what you have in your hand. Amen. Amen. How he demanded me to pay my own way. He wanted to see what I do. Actually, it was a thousand times more. Three times. A thousand. A thousand times more. Thousand my accountant, mm -hmm. yes. the minister of finance, is in my house. <laughs> And don't laugh at that because I don't have no money. Amen? Amen. I don't have no money. And I don't say all men ain't got that problem, but I don't have no money. I'm just learning how to keep money. But I got grandchildren, you know. <laughs> so, so you got to have money in your wallet. <laughs> Amen? But God is it. Yes, he is. God said you laid that hundred dollars. I was in Nigeria preaching on a Wednesday night in a trailer. Looked like a trailer when I left the end. It was a trailer, long one. And as I was ministering, the Lord laid me on a floor. Now, I'm going to show you something. Usually, I wouldn't have did that because the floor was a little bit damp because of carpet. And I had on a very light suit. I kneeled on that floor. And God said, I overturn your mortgage. Our mortgage was sold three times to different places. A mortgage went up to about $400,000. Mm -hmm. 
We tried to pay the original 20 something. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was about 20. 2000 and something. They rejected it. They wanted it all. I was wondering how the world worked. So that night, the Lord gave me his word. God said, I've given you favor before the council and all his lawyers and advisors. I've given you a marriage and favor. And then with the same thing, he asked me, I got a call to come into Nigeria. It was to be there in a week, I think. Went into our own pockets and did that deal. Took three hundred dollars worth of cash. Went into service for fourteen days, and the Lord laid on that floor and said, "I turn it now. I turn your day." I called my wife and said, the Lord has moved that day. And I knew it. I saw the miracle that God worked in the people's lives there. When I came home, I was immediately put in another church where I testified the same day. And from there, I was put back into Madrid, Spain, where I testified the same day. I kept on testifying the same day and to everybody that were here. Hallelujah. And then the company called and said, we want to buy your place back. They wanted to buy it back. That's crazy. We want to buy your place back. We want to remove everything. We're even giving you money to move. <laughs> oh. I was in Spain ministering when my wife found the place where we are now. The Lord had already provided them money to move. God overturned, overruled over four hundred plus thousand dollars. I'm telling you, God is good. I'm telling you, Malachi three ten and eleven works. It do what it said it would do. But the problem is, we got to believe it. That's that hundredfold, some some forty, some thirty. That's that coming forth of having that knowledge in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and let Him do the work. The hearts of the kings, He says, are in His hands. He can turn them in which way you will. And God gives unto us unmerited favor. God has never forgotten the seed you sow. He says, though you have lacked opportunity now, he says, but understand that giving will be restored unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because I have never forgotten your work and your work of labor and love that you do it under this sight. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The whole back is being what's coming out of my mouth. If you believe I will bless you, act like a servant of the Lord. Come on, give him some glory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joshua 1 8 says, The book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe, that you may study and look and understand it. To do according to all that is written, written in it. For then, said the Lord God, for then, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Father Lord, I just give you all the glory and honor and praise this day. I just thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for your sons and daughters, for those that have heard the word, the word that is sown on good ground. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for stirring them up today. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that our eyes are open, Lord God, unto the reality, the assurance, Father Lord, the incorporeness of your word. We just give you the glory and all honor and praise this morning. We thank you for the signs and wonders that will follow us, Lord God, who believe. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the strongholds now that are being torn down 
in Jesus' name. The strongholds of doubt and of fear. The strongholds of lack, Father Lord, and defeat. The strongholds, Father God. The tongue that has risen up against us in judgment, we condemn it to failure and to death. In the name of Jesus. Father, we just give you all the glory and all the praise this morning for everything that I have set my eyes to, said that the Lord God shall prosper. Every seed that I have sown in your name, Father Lord, shall spring forth in the name of Jesus, bringing forth that fruit for which you speak. I thank you now, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, that are anointed upon your sons and daughters to break every chain, every chain, every chain, Father Lord, that has been erected in their lives. And I thank you, Lord, for placing your hand upon their tongues this morning in the name of Jesus. That their tongues, that they begin to speak of your might, that they begin to speak of your power from the inner mind, Lord God. That they begin to cry out, Abba, Father, I come to do your will and not my will. And above all, I thank you for setting us free. I thank you for setting us free in Jesus' mighty name. In obedience. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God some glory in my name. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a wonderful message. What a wonderful message of hope and strength. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to encourage you all later on to go back and watch this again. You need to take this in one more time. Amen. Amen. Even at this time, we actually have a, a pastor in the house that I'm so glad to see. I want to just honor him. Uh, pastor Richard Ross. Hallelujah. Praise God for the man of God. Hallelujah. Coming in the house. Pastor, will you, will you come and do the sinner's prayer? The sinner's prayer. We're about to do the sinner's prayer. <laughs> And lead souls to Christ. Amen. The, the thing about Pastor Ross is, is that for five years I sat under him and he, he encouraged, he strengthened, he oh, uh, built me up. He, he taught me how to endure in the faith. He taught me how to stand in the midst of, uh, of good times and bad times. Amen. Amen. And so he's, he's been an example of faithfulness. Um, in hard times, amen, and so I've learned to stand, amen, <laughs> hallelujah, y'all ain't heard the story yet, we're going to tell it later, amen, but even now, uh, Pastor Ross, I'm going to put it in your hands, hallelujah, hallelujah, I don't know what was my instructions, man, I'm just, I'm just glad, <laughs> hallelujah, oh, praise God, let's give God praise and glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm sorry for all those that are not here, because I think I think one of the world needs to hear this message today. The saints of God need to hear this message today. The people across the street need to hear this message. But the Holy Spirit said, no, no, there's special people in the house today. Everybody that this message is for is here. We are privileged and blessed. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm just drunk right now. We are all in the same house. <laughs> What you see here is three people that was in the same church for a number of years. Uh, oh, they lie in mouth. Praise God. Oh, bless God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, this is the man of God just spoke so many things to me that the Holy Spirit had been saying for the past two weeks. Even a week ago, I had a dream that I was in the trenches, my brother. You mentioned the trenches? He got him out of my shop, my God. Whoa. Hallelujah. Now, I had a vacuum cleaner, though. I was vacuum cleaning the trench with a vacuum cleaner. I'm going, what am I doing in the trench with a vacuum cleaner? There's all types of nasty stuff in there, but I was just getting sucked out. I thought like I was in the military again, man. The trench. Oh, my God. But now I know what it meant, brother. Hallelujah. God is just so good, so marvelous. Who is a God like unto our God? He watcheth after his word to perform it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, yeah. brother, you said we, the sinners for ain't no sinners up in this house right now. No, but online. We got, we got folks online. Oh, oh my God, I'm online? <laughs> Lord, help <heaven. laughs> me. Let me dry my eyes. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot about technology. You see, I'm old school. <laughs> my Lord, get out here now. I'm online. Well, <clears throat> let me be dignified. I'm online. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm in the spirit on the Lord's day. We bless the name of the Lord. Well, you out there, you've heard a word 
from the Lord. You've heard God's heart. You've heard God say, believe. You've heard God say, trust. You've heard God say that he is the mighty God, that there's nothing too hard for him. You've heard God say he's mindful of you. He knows where you are. You've heard God say that he sent Jesus, his only begotten son, because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe upon him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I can tell you that it was about 44 years ago that God made himself known unto me through the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. He died on the cross for our salvation. He shed his blood for our salvation. That whosoever would believe upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Believe me, the principal thing is everlasting life. But hallelujah. But also for this world also. He wants to take care of you. He is daddy God. He is our father. And he revealed himself through Jesus Christ. Amen. So I would beseech you today that if you have not considered, just considered, is this true? Is this true? And you hear the Spirit say, yes. In my own experience, when they opened up the book and showed me the word, and I just said, can these things be true? Can these things be true? And a voice spoke inside my own spirit and said, yes, these things are true. And that was in the 70s. Oh, well, there was a lot of lies going around about Jesus being the white man's God and all that nonsense. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Like the man of God said today, that word believe began to resound in my heart and my soul. And I beseech you today, believe and receive Jesus Christ right where you are. If you're driving pull over to the side of the road, this is too important to let go another day. Because tomorrow is not promise. Jesus loves you. God loves you. He died. He rose again for your justification. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. So Father, today in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that those out there that are hearing and listening would open up their heart and receive you, Lord. Say after me, Lord, Lord I believe that Jesus Christ, I believe that Jesus Christ died, for my sins, died for my sins and he rose again from the dead for my justification that I might become righteous through faith in him that I might righteous through faith and him alone. And him alone. I receive Christ today, receive Christ today as, my as my Lord and Savior. I surrender. I, surrender. I bow. I believe, I believe and I receive. And, I receive. and now, Lord God, I give you thanks for receiving me as your child into the family of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. So we bless you today. Thank you. We're now brothers and sisters in the Lord. We're brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. And eternal life is ours. God bless you. Amen. And one last, one last detail. I want to make sure that those that want to watch Pastor Patterson on a regular basis, you can uh, friend him. You, you can subscribe to see him on Facebook under House of Prayer. House of Prayer. He has many messages that are encouraging, that are inspiring, that are thought-provoking. Amen. Even I just want to encourage you all for those that desire to to actually watch this again. You can go to YouTube. You can go to uh, Jim Global Evangelistic Ministries, uh, or you can look up. You can write in Pastor Eldridge G, G E M, and you will actually see the videos from last week and from today, and even the ones that are coming uh, throughout the rest of this series. Amen. If you want to watch, please go like, uh, subscribe. Uh, ring the bell and get the notifications, amen, and do it all. Finally, I just want to say thank you. God bless you and keep you, and may he continue to cause his face to shine upon you. Until next time, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.